Welcome to Media Minute Roundtable. For this edition, we're talking about our favorite authors. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And for this edition of Media Minute, uh, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, some of our favorite authors this week, going the literally or literal route for this one. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Was that a question? Thanks, guys. <laughs> can jump in whenever. I, well, I, I thought you were just like making a statement being like, yeah, we're doing books. And I was like, okay, cool. I didn't realize that I needed to say something. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. That's happy fine. Sa- happy uh, Saturday, everybody. Happy Saturday. We record these on Saturdays of our own viol- volition. So <laughs> I don't know why. We're and doing great. Anyway, books. Books, books. of people who, books. who write books and yes. o- other novelizations and whatnot. So uh, who wants to start this week? I'll do it. You, you going to start? Okay. Yeah. So for my first book, I actually read this. I, I found that I have a common theme in my books. It's either sci-fi, fantasy, or horror. Like that's that's the big the majority three. That's like yeah. pretty, pretty much what I read too. Yeah. So it's like um, I kind of realized like looking through all of the authors that I read that it all has a very similar kind of vibe. So for like my first author, I want to start off, start off English, Rachel, uh, Robert R. McCammon. Okay. And this is his song, Swan Song. It was the first one that I, or his song, his book, sorry, um, that I read. And I think I was about in grade nine. And I remember reading it. And the Swan Song book was incredible. It was uh, kind of based off a post-apocalyptic after nuclear war kind of thing. And um, after reading it, I just kind of fell in love with his writing. And yeah, I would definitely suggest his stuff. If you're into post-apocalyptic or fantasy, definitely the thing to read. I'll have to check that out because post-apocalyptic is like one of my top five oh it's it's crazy he he has like uh in this one anyways he does like mention like nuclear mutants oh nice and like how how it like kind of affects yeah yeah right my my top three mutants (laughs) one's top three yeah (laughs) but um it's yeah it's crazy because he's an american uh novelist from birmingham alabama and he's actually one of the most influential names in like the late 1970s, 1990s American horror literature boom. Yeah. So if you're into that kind of vibe, I would definitely suggest him. Like he, the descriptions and everything in it, and like I got attached to characters and it was really hard to get attached to, like not attached to characters in this because it's like the way he characterizes them and makes them so personable. It's like you're sitting there the whole time, like just praying like, please, Lord, don't let this guy like kill my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good when they do that, though. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, if we're going post-apocalyptic, uh, I feel like I need to give a shout out to the road. Yes. The Cor- Cor- yes. Cormac McCarthy. That's great. Absolutely. Also, the fil- excellent. The film's good. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Well, who was that? Was uh, that Vigo. Yeah, Vigo. Yeah, it was Vigo. Yeah. I remember because it's like I just finished watching Lord of the Rings, and um, I saw that he was in that one, and I checked the film out. My God, that man can act. Yeah. So good. I uh, some shops, yeah, sure. I liked him in GI yeah. Jane. Uh, he was like the drill sergeant. GI Jane, I forgot about that. Movie. I forgot. Yeah, D- yeah, Demi Moore or Demi Moore. I, yeah, I never know how to pronounce that. His uh, like bird falling from the nest speech. Uh, I don't know if you can remember that. It's like, I don't. You know what? To be honest, I don't think I ever saw that movie. Yeah, I remember the really? movie poster. This is a bald Demi Moore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think I ever saw that actually. Yeah. Crazy. Good. Was it, uh, was it good? <laughs> yeah, it was a good, good, good performance by Vigo. I uh, can't remember right. too much else about it actually, but like I remember, like he has this this kind of speech when he's talking to the Navy SEAL recruits. That's uh, kind of iconic. Wicked. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I never saw it. Maybe I should check it out. Yeah. I think so. For sure. Worse than happy to watch the first like 15 minutes and like turn it off. I mean, it's got to be better than Ghost Ship. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know why everybody hates Ghost Ship. <laughs> so we're picking on Ghost Ship for Listen, Carl Urban in that is okay. It's an okay performance by an ensemble I, I cast. I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where to go from there. <laughs> no. I don't know. Nobody who knows where to go? to go from Ghost Ship. Who wants to go uh, after? Or who wants to go next? I'm Who's the next? next. Yeah. I'll go. Let me get my books all lined up here. Yeah, Ooh. physical media. There we go. Oh. Ooh. Camera right, not my right. 
Charles Bukowski. Nice. Nice. Pam on Rye, Post Office, Women. Tons of poetry. Uh, if you're into a bitter old drunk who uh, lives, his, lives his life by his own rules and writes beautiful poetry. Yeah. In a very, he kind of, he kind of came up in a, like the 50s and 60s, kind of when like the, the whole beat poetry thing was going on. Okay. Like Jack yeah, Kerouac yeah. and Burroughs. Oh, and cool. He was kind of fringe, I guess, like in, in that kind of scene. But uh, yeah, he was a, he was a bastard. Yeah, by no, by no stress, but like pretty much everyone at that time is like, yeah, like they're, gonna, they're horrible people, but excellent writers. Yeah, like, I'm just gonna drink all day yeah. and just get into fights and <laughs> steal food. And, yeah. Do you think they? Do you think they would have argued that it was for the art? Like, oh, I need absolutely. to be this way for yeah. the art. Yeah. 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 Of, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's what it was all about. But yeah, like it was. It was you know at that time when like a lot of people were traveling across America trying to find themselves. Yeah, the whole Route of... sixty six era. Yeah, it's kind of the peak yeah. of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he was a drunk. He was a dick. Wildly successful, and he basically uh, he definitely spawned a lot of knockoffs. Yeah, like he was a uh, very, I guess, influential in that in that sense. I don't know. I don't know who? if that's good or bad. Like, who is a knockoff from him? Uh, no, I don't. I can't think of any off the top of my head, really, because I go for the source. Yep. But uh, uh, he influenced a lot of musicians, a lot of punk bands. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Cool. Like, again, I can't name any specifics. I'm, I'm speaking in generalities here. But, uh, <gasps> how dare you? But uh, <laughs> yeah, if you wanna, he was definitely a drunk. Kind of, he was kind of famous for. It. That's kind of that's kind of his thing. He's a drunk. Yeah. Just the typical. He, he kind of invented. Well, no. Kind of re uh, made a resurgence of like the idea of the drunken artist. Yeah. Like, just starving. He's up there poet. with the. Uh, what's the guy who wrote the old man in the sea? That guy. Hemingway. Hemingway. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm pretty sure Ernest Hemingway was like the first yeah, he, guy to be was, like. He was known. <laughs> yeah. So if yeah. you're at Ernest Hemingway, and if you want to read about a guy's messed up life, and that's all he wrote about, like he didn't really do much of fiction. Yeah. He just led a crazy, violent, drunken life and wrote about it, and it's beautiful. Cool. So if you want to really cool. read some, uh, yeah, some uh, some ugly but beautiful words from a drunken. Well, a, a committed drunk. Like he, like the doctor told him, if you have one more drink, you're gonna die. And the first thing he did is went to the bar. Yeah. Oh my God. If that, that kind of gives you an idea of what kind of functional kinda, alcoholic. What kind of dude Charles yeah. Bukowski yeah. was? Yeah, he's That's crass. Crazy. He's a uh, he doesn't censor himself. He's a bit of a prick. Well, if you're if but you're speaking about your life though. Yeah. Know what you write, write what you know. That's what they say. Absolutely. And that's exactly, exactly what Charles Bukowski did. Hank, Hank Chinaski, if you're, uh, if, if you're cool. Yeah. That's not cool. Okay. <laughs> that's no. <laughs> that, that was a, that was supposed to be a joke, but it didn't land. No. That happens. Anyways. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll go next, I guess. Uh, sure. My first kind of set, it, it's, it's a team because they both worked on like the same novel series. Uh, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Uh, they created the Dragonlance uh, setting back in 1984. Oh, cool. And it was kind of my uh, introduction to fantasy. Uh, like, I had two older brothers. They're five and six years older than me. So they were reading kind of these larger, like, 300-page novels. And, of course, being a younger kid, you try to keep up with uh, your older brothers. So well, everybody else was, like, reading, like, Goosebumps and stuff like that, kind of smaller, like YA stuff. I was pouring into these 300 page fantasy novels, but it was Love that. it was basically my Lord of the Rings. Like, no, I had, no shade on Goosebumps, like, no goose, Goosebumps, first. no, yeah, yeah. so cool. I see, yeah, yeah, I, li I like R.L. Stein, definitely like his Fear Street series was a part of my youth, but uh, sorry, got you off track, yeah, um. Yeah, they wrote this back in uh, 1984. Uh, it's based on a Dungeons & Dragons series. Um, yeah, it's an epic fantasy war tale. Uh, like, the first three books kind of covers uh, what's known as the War of the uh, Lance. 
And uh, they worked on kind of many more anthology stories for this particular series. There's a whole bunch of Dragonlance novels, like uh, they really expanded out that setting. And for fans of the series, uh, they're actually releasing the first of a new first new novel in a new trilogy for Dragonlance later this year. There was some uh, legal issues. Uh, uh, what happened? <laughs> they yeah. well, but they had an agreement with the people who currently. Uh, own Dungeons and Dragons, and they apparently some of their writing was problematic because it's like old old style fantasy. So they the okay. publishers basically canceled the books on them, and they're like, no, we have a contract. So they Ooh. there was some suing and stuff like that, but problematic. Yeah. Like, what, was, what was wrong with them? It, it's was it? it's problematic. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Was, was there okay. a lot? Was there a lot to unpack? I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it's like what what was appropriate back in 1984 is not considered appropriate now. That's a gotcha. That's yeah. A, but uh, oh. anyway, yeah, they they fought and they did. wait. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. 1984. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not Orwell. <laughs> it's not Orwell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because but that, yeah, got they, scared for they went through this legal battle and they yes the the new novels are finally coming out which is. You know, great for a lot of fans. But like I said, this was my first kind of fantasy series. Read it before I read Lord of the Rings. So, uh, yeah. No. Did I ever tell you about when I met uh, Gary Gygax? I think that's how you say it. Yeah, I, th- I think you, you met him, yeah. 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 I didn't even know I did. <laughs> it was at a Comic-Con. Just, I was, we were just waiting in line yeah. to, for the bathroom. I was just talking to this dude. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know he was, like, one of the creators of D&D. Yeah. You didn't yeah. have to roll the P or anything, did yeah. you? No. No, thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah, because like you know, you're, you're going up against the boss, and oof. pretty much. Um, but you know, people got mad at me because I didn't know who he was. The, they're, they're you asking. can't expect to know. Like, I'm pretty sure that if I ever went to Hollywood, I would pass like all sorts of celebrities and the heck, right? have no clue yeah, like, who they are. Totally. Yeah, because like, I was at, it was at Comic Con. Yeah, and then a bunch of people saw me talking to him, like, and then I was kind of like, guy went acts. back to my stuff. And they, what'd you ask him? I'm like, okay, yeah, what, what? Wait, who? The guy, the did guy, you wash? Guy? Did you wash your hands? Yeah, like the, guy, <laughs> the guy waiting in line in the bathroom. They're like, yeah, and then, yeah, they got upset that I didn't ask them. I didn't ask him their questions. <laughs> That's like, crazy. I, I didn't know who I was talking to. Uh, I I could understand yeah. that though. Like people like D and D is like a crazy game, right? Like people have been playing that for generations. So like the fact that you didn't know probably like chilled him out a bit because he was like oh god i don't want to answer these questions I mean, like, <laughs> like yeah. oh yeah he, he probably needed a break yeah so yeah. i went to the washroom <laughs> to get away from him. <laughs> don't want to deal with dragons and wizards just for five yeah. minutes come on man like I, yes please he wanted to be a wizard not a wizard <laughs> i'm looking at the camera right now yeah but um boom. um there was a there was an adaption uh, an animated movie that they came out in the late 2000s Kiefer Sutherland, really? <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland did a voice for it, but uh, nice. yeah, well, it wasn't. Awesome. Uh, what up, Ace? Wasn't very good. No, that's no. too bad. It, it's yeah, it was really disappointing. Uh, yeah. Like a lot of fans were looking forward to it, so the fact that it didn't turn out that well was was not good. Anyway, Rachel. Anywho. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. that's my. Do you have any bathroom stories? No, <laughs> no. I I don't. No, no, I, no. I'm good. You haven't. Uh, Ran into any creators of a uh, what would you call D and D like a tabletop board game? I guess? Yeah, yeah, role playing. Yeah, game. role playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no. can't say I have. No, really? I think uh, that seems no, weird. no, I don't really. No, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, my next author, I think a lot of people know him because obviously there's been a ton of movie adaptions up from his books and even TV shows, and that is Stephen King. Yes. He is my dude when it comes to writing. I may not agree with his politics, but he's a brilliant writer. Wait, Stephen who? I've never heard of this guy. Uh, Oh, my God. (laughs) But um, it's kind of funny because I was in about middle school when I started reading his books. And actually, Cell, this book right here, was the first book that I read. Yeah. And I I remember being terrified after reading it because I didn't want to use my cell phone. I actually thought, like, if I use my cell phone, I was going to turn into this, like, angry zombie thing. That's like and, uh, hashtag relatable. Yeah, right absolutely. Now. I was, I, yeah. Well, it's like I was terrified. But like after that, I kind of fell in love with his writing. And I remember going to the library. I think I was like, I don't know. How old are you in like middle school? Like 12, uh, 13, yeah. something like that. 10, 11, and 12. Um, 
Yeah, and I remember going to the librarian with a bunch of Stephen King novels. And she looked at me and she was like, oh, you're too young for this. This is too mature for you. And I was like, I read this at home. Like, why is this a problem? Because I wanted to do a book report on The Gunslinger. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of funny because the librarian actually refused to rent out the book to me. And I was like, okay, fine, then whatever. And so I didn't rent anything out. And my teacher asked and I was like, no, like she wouldn't let me rent out the book I wanted to read. And she was like, what was the book? And I was like, The Gunslinger. And she's like, Stephen King? Because like, what 12 year old is going to the library looking for a Stephen King novel? But I, I did. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, no, but like I was I think I was in I think I was in a Catholic school at the time. But I just remember they were like really weirded out. And I was like, I read at a higher level than my grade. So I understood what he was saying. But I ended up just bringing a book from home. But it was just so funny because like the librarian was just like, no, this is too inappropriate for you. I was like, no, it's. How dare this child hard. try to read? All right. Right? How dare so, they read something that they're interested in? Absolutely. I was Some blown away. Kids. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Eh. I don't know. But uh, Stephen King has been a staple in our household for like as long as I've been alive and probably longer than that. Like every, anytime there's a new Stephen King novel, my parents are the first people to get it. Yeah. I never got so. into Stephen King. I, I, I've read a couple of his novels. Uh, I, I read The Running Man for sure. Great movie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he, did he do that under the dome? Yeah. Thing? Yes, he did. Yeah, I read that, and I think that's yeah. about it. Yeah, like, I, I'm actually. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. I was gonna say, like, I, I definitely had a lot of Stephen King books. Yeah. Like as a kid, but that's just because I kind of took them from the library and never returned them. <gasps> oh, Scandalous. you were that guy. Yeah. I, it wasn't on purpose. I'm sorry. I was, young, <laughs> I was young and didn't know any better. The book cops will be yeah. coming for you. So uh, there's, yeah. there's, there's a few public libraries out there that I owe an apology to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but no, as I was saying, though, it's like Stephen King. It's kind of interesting because his wife's also an author, but she does a completely different genre. And yeah. then his son is actually coming up in the uh, writing world. His uh, pseudo name is Joe Hill because he didn't want to go off of his dad's last name. Yeah, and it's crazy because a lot of people are actually saying he's a better writer than his dad. Ooh, that's throwing down the gauntlet. Yeah, that's a that's no, the, but them, like them's fighting it, words. But it's crazy though because if you read, I read if I think one of his books, and it's actually he's getting some film adaptions as well. Um, Horns, the one with Daniel Radcliffe, oh, that, yeah. was that was a him? Joe Hill okay. movie. Yeah, that was a Joe Hill book. Yeah. So it's really interesting because you can see the influence. And I'm just kind of curious is like, I know for right now, I'm reading the Dark Tower series from Stephen King. And um, people were really worried because when he got hit by that car, they thought, oh, my God, like, we're never going to find out the ending to the Dark Tower. Yeah. Because it's, like at that time, Ooh, it was well, so. That was their main concern? Well, no, That's they were worried cold. that. He... No, but you know what I mean, though, right? Like. Like, they're, like, they're obviously worried well, about him, yeah, too. Yeah. Could pull a J.R.R. Martin and, like, never yeah. finish the series. <laughs> Looking at you, J.R. But, uh, yeah, no, so people, once they started reading Joe Hill, they were like, you know, what if something, like, did happen to Stephen King? Like, they do think that, like, he could pick up the torch and, like, finish the series, so. Yeah. You should check out, you should check out uh, Richard Bachman. I think you'd like him. Yep. I've read him, too. <laughs> yeah. A little Stephen King joke there. Yep. <laughs> Actually, do, for the longest time, people didn't realize that was Stephen King. Like, the only way they found out about that was because uh, he was picking up a royalty check for Richard Bachman. Yeah. And they were like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, uh, I'll bust it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a me. <laughs> it's yeah. a me, Stephen. Yeah, but, like, the whole reason he did it, though, is, like, he's like, do people like my writing or do they like, like just Stephen King so he wanted to try it in a completely different way and if you do read like Richard Bachman it's interesting because it's like you can see similarities but he does write differently yeah it's like Garth Brooks Garth Brooks and uh, well, Chris, Chris Gaines Chris Gaines yeah that that Wait, was a what? thing for like half a year wait yeah, hold on like, yeah what? Yeah, Garth Brooks came up with like this alternate personality for some like a, reason he, he's like a pop star who had like a yeah. emo haircut yeah what yeah, Google Are you it. serious? Yeah, yeah, that was like Google two, Chris Gaines. 2000. No. I, I think it was like 2000, 2001. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, I was in That's high wild. school when that was going on. Yeah. I had no idea that Garth Brooks did that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, I guess that's 20 it, years it, ago. It, now. it wasn't cool, but. No. Everyone was like, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you got to give him props. He wanted to try something different. So. Yeah, you can't blame him for that. No, for sure. Absolutely. Chris, who well, what do you about have you? next? 
What do I got next? Okay. Um, going TV shows on this one. Yep. Ooh. Rod Serling. Oh, yeah. Rod Serling. Uh, Twilight Zone Rider. Man. Yep. Twilight Zone. Love. Uh, mm-hmm. that's yep. Easy top three shows ever. If you've seen, Absolutely. If you've seen the uh, Treehouse of... What was it? The Treehouse of Terror on Simpsons? Treehouse of Horror. Uh, horror, horror. Yeah. yeah. My bad. Yeah, you definitely know Rod Serling's writings. Yeah. yeah. The, the to, fee, uh, to Feed Man. Uh, yeah, like every multi- every classic Twilight Zone episode. Well, yeah, I, mean, I guess it could take hours, but yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, the gremlin on the wing of the plane. <laughs> yeah. With William Shatner. With Shatner, yeah. Shatner. Who was in Star Trek. Yeah. Which I got no way to tie that in. <laughs> <laughs> You tried though. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, yeah. Rod Serling, uh, Twilight Zone. If you haven't seen it, you're uh, you're uh, you're missing out. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. Cl- classic uh, twist ending stories. That yep. He, oh, he was so good at that. Like Shyamalan, definitely took a page from oh, Rod sure. Serling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Shyamalan is like stated that like he was one of his inspirations. So gotta be. Yeah. Gotta like be. absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good one. That's that's, that's probably mm-hmm. all. I, that's that's my case. Yep. Although, actually, I will add that I miss when you could uh, change your IP address to get American Netflix because they have <laughs> all of, they have the, all the old Twilight Zones. Oh, do there. they? Yeah. Or at least I'm they did. Sh- I'm pretty sure Amazon Prime has them. Yeah, but you gotta pay for them. I think so. Yeah, yeah I gotta look. Yeah. Well, yeah, not a super exciting answer there. Just yeah, Rod Serling, Twilight yeah, Zone. Great um, stuff. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I know he influenced, uh, when I uh, referenced that uh, book that I read a, a few episodes back, The uh, the Waiting for Superman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Michael Straczynski, he, uh, one of the big things in his life was that Sterling, uh, uh, he met Sterling once, and that oh, kind of cool. drove him. I love and that. Even just his voice. Yeah. Um, imagine if you were. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Yeah. So... That's my man. Yeah. Uh, my, How about you, Mike? My next one is, uh, well, I brought him up before on the show, Siri Terry Pratchett, who wrote nice. the Discworld series. It's over 40 books. This guy was prolific. Is this uh, Robotech or Battletech? No, this is Discworld. No text? No text. Oh, okay. No. My bad. Um, there's golems. I, I don't know. Uh, first Discworld book was released back in 1983, named The uh, Color of Magic. And, uh, yeah, it's a great series. It's British humor. It's like... There's lots of plays on words and stuff like that. Lots of puns. Um, you know, he makes fun of like bureaucracy and like governments and stuff like that. Uh, Taking the piss, pretty much all through. He's got like a a bunch of like classic iconic kind of characters that show up again and again. Um, some of his stories have been adapted as BBC series, uh, and, oh, cool. and for those, Christopher Lee, like he has this. He has death as a character in his books. So if someone co- comes, if someone dies in the series, like death usually shows up to uh, take them away. But uh, yeah, it, they had Christopher Lee voicing death, which was fantastic. Yeah, like that's a genius <laughs> casting. If death was showing up to, to visit me for like my final moments, I'd, he better be voiced by Christopher Lee. Um, yeah, he was uh, knighted. That's why he served Terry Pratchett for his contributions to literature. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, sadly, he passed away from Alzheimer's in 2015. It's one of those tragic oh. things where, like, he's this super creative, awesome person. And to get Alzheimer's, like, uh, to see him decline in, like, the last couple of years of his life was was super sad. But there's lots of his stuff, you know. Yeah, like, he definitely just, left a legacy. He did. He did. Yeah. I know, like I said, 40 books. <laughs> I, yeah, I, like I don't even know if I've insane. ever read forty books. Yeah, that's just in I, that series. He had like a couple other like spinoffs and, and stuff like that. So the man could that's write. cool. Yeah, um, definitely recommend. Like if you like humorous British humor, yeah, ch- check that one out for sure. A uh, bit of a sidebar, but uh, what does being knighted do? Um, like you get to call yourself sir, I guess. Yeah, like do you get to carry a sword? Probably not. I mean, like, you carry a sword anyway. There might be people who try yeah. to stop you. <laughs> like, do you get a yeah. tax break or something? Like, what's well? Like, what, I feel is, like is it's perks? more of like a, it's yeah. more of like yeah. a, it's an a reco- honor. Yeah, because it's, it's a recognition. Like the, yeah, like, like so, it's like people will look at you and it's like, oh my god, that guy has contributed 
did so much to like society and like civilization that they decided like yeah. this guy needs to be recognized for that kind of thing. So it's just a form of recognition. Yeah. You get to meet the queen, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's true, because yeah. the queen knights them, yep. right? I don't know. Probably. Because it sounds like really f- <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to bleep that bleep. It sounds really cool. It's like, yo, I'm a knight. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, like, at, at one time you would be like an actual knight and you would like be granted lands and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Fight but, dragons. But the definition cool. of that has, has changed in the Oh, for sure. Last but century. I mean, like. If you look at the people that have been knighted, like Sir Christopher Lee, Sir Ian McKellen, Sir Patrick Stewart, yeah. like you can see why, and oh. obviously Sir Terry Pratchett, right? Like it's it and, they've and, and done Hawkins. so much. Yeah, Sir. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I I always forget that Anthony's knighted too. All the cool people. Yeah, like I want to be part of that club. <laughs> yeah. Paul, I, I think Paul McCartney too. Yeah, I think you have to yeah. be British though, or if you yeah. get oh, yeah, really? yeah, or you have to renounce like your citizenship or whatever if you're from like a different country. Well, another thing, too, is, like, do women get knighted? Or is that something else? I don't else? think so. Uh, I, I don't yeah, think I've I'm ever heard sure. of, like, a instance of that happening. Yeah, I can't think of... Yeah. Wow, this <laughs> is three people talking about something they know nothing about. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> but we got, the, we got the gears going. We got now everybody's like, wait a minute. Yeah, we're just thinking about yeah. that. We're spitballing. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday. Having some fun. Yeah. What else are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir Terry Cratchit, my second choice. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Excellent choice. Rachel. Okay, so for my last one, um, this guy was insane. He did a lot of science fiction and fantasy genres. Um, Piers Anthony yep. is my next one, and especially Isle of Woman and Shame of Man. It was a series he did that was really interesting because he actually started uh, in Isle of Woman at the very beginning, so like caveman kind of thing, and then you kind of see like the change in human history within it. So I always thought that was a really cool premise and I like I really enjoyed like the rawness of his writing. He was very like open and like didn't hold anything back really because it's like human history was brutal, yeah. but it was also beautiful, right? So I really enjoyed the writing of it and um he has quite a few other books that are really interesting. He actually created a series uh with the fictional uh realm of Xanth, I think it is. It's like X A N T H. But um yeah, Th- those excellent. books are completely packed with puns. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, like I think he's an, an excellent writer. And I definitely think if you're interested in fantasy, science fiction, all of the above, like you have to check him out for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good choice. Uh, there was actually a video game spinoff called Champions of Xanth. Oh, cool. I love that. Yeah. I didn't know that. And there was a book like based on the, the video game. That's, I think that's the only thing I've read by him so far, but all I remember yeah. is that it was jam packed with puns oh yeah it was great yeah but yeah like uh isle of woman and shame of man are like my favorite too just because like i don't know like again like the characters you could really connect with them and everything and um just seeing like how he thought human history kind of went within these characters and these families i always thought that was really cool yeah nice i guess that leaves me yeah Yeah. yep all right um this is my last pick isn't it Yes, it is. Yeah, crazy. Okay, well, this one I had a hard time with. Yep. Because if you only get three, you got to be selective. You got to you got to discriminate a little bit. I was looking at Dostoevsky. Yep. Notes from the Underground was great. Brothers Caramel, so all that stuff. Then I was thinking Clive Barker. Yeah. Oh, another good one. I was thinking Henry Miller, Tropic of Cancer. Yep. But then I realized, no, no. Uh, <laughs> it's not actually from an author to probably hundreds, if not thousands of authors. And I can't even really explain this very well, but um, one thing that is amazing to read are menus. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your meme answer for the week. That, no, that's, that's honest. Yeah. And it's no, like seriously, like the Rachel's laughing right now because she knows it's true. I yeah, love, I, re- and you know, like, I know it's it's true it's, as well. It's insane. It's yeah. act, like you literally like. There's been a few times where it's like we've gone out to like eat, like, and we're sitting there, and he's like, "Can I keep the menu?" And then like until the food comes, and even just a little bit afterwards, you look over, and Chris is just like looking over the menu over and over and over again, this even though true. he's already ordered. It's, it's crazy. True. Yeah. Like it's it's not people notice it. Do you have a favorite menu? 
Ooh. Oh, oh Taco Bell. Yeah, Taco Bell's nice. <laughs> yeah. Anything Tex Mex sushi menus are nice. Yep. Italian okay, well, like, what's nice? Oh, it's what's, they're all good. I what's the worst? What's the worst menu you've ever read? Ooh. Ooh. I gotta I don't know. Wanna, um, they're all good. There's, there's, no, obviously there's, there's not, gotta be one. not all menus are created equal. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> That's but, gonna be your biography, probably. <laughs> Not all menus are created equal. The, it's the, the story. story of Christopher Ruskowski. Yeah. Um, worst menu? No, I don't know. I, I, I don't really. Know. Yeah, I've I've never had a I've never put down a menu and felt ripped off. I was like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's got to be one. Nothing that stands out. Really, I mean. You've never been disappointed of... by a menu, like ever. Uh, pictures are nice. If you don't have pictures in there, or like just really bad descriptions, yeah, just like hey, pepperoni, garlic, cheese. Like, yeah, come on. I've seen it done better. I know it can happen. <laughs> so like, if people are worried about their menus, can they send them to you? Yeah, and like be like, hey, can you can you review this for me so I know I have a good menu? I think like could that be a you, side gig? Yeah, you they probably should. You need to have a series on history called Menu Man. Where you <laughs> go around review and menus. review menus and fix yeah. them up if they are lacking. Yeah, like people so people so call weird. you and are like, I don't know about the design or the description. Like, I need your help. And it's like, menu man. Coming up after you know? Ice Road Truckers. <laughs> menu man. I am willing, confident, competent, and ready to go. Yep. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, you have, if you have menu questions and you're watching this, Hit me up. Netflix. I love it. You know where to find them. Yeah. 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 So like, yeah, that's my <laughs> Menus. You need a good layout. You need a good spread. A couple pictures in there. You don't need. A, you don't need a picture for every every <laughs> item. But you you want to highlight the. Uh, actually, that's Sate. Like menu design is an actual course. Oh yeah. No really. Yeah yeah yeah. It's part of like the. Uh, I don't know, like the col- like cooking. The, the col- culinary. culinary people. Yeah. It, it is important. Student. Like, oh, it is yeah. totally. I would, I would take just that class. Yep. Like, I don't Can even, you? I, I feel probably. like you. Um, kn- I feel like I you know. know everything already, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I should probably Self-taught. be teaching that class. <laughs> it's gonna be funny because in like 20 years from now, it's like, yo, whatever happened to like Chris? It's like, yeah, he's actually teaching menu design yeah. <laughs> at one of the colleges. I would totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No problem. Sure. I love that. I like it. I just I just think they're an underrated form of literature. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> have you I ever? Ha, ha, here, here's my question: Have you ever taken a menu with you to the washroom to read? Oh. Mm, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I'd have several questions if you did. <laughs> it's not a bad idea now that you said it out loud. No! 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 Don't do it. If anyone ever visits, it's like, why are all these yeah, like, menus need, in here? <laughs> I don't need Archie Comics while I'm going to the washroom. I got like a bunch of takeout menus. There you go. Oh, oh my God. Well, I'm going to move on. <laughs> I, I, I could keep talking about menus. I, I, I know you could. That, that's the yeah. scary part. I can go grab one right now. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> Mike, what's your, what's your book? Yeah, well, it's the man who brought us Conan, Robert E. Howard. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, he was a pulp fiction writer back in the 30s. Uh, his first published story was called Spirit and Fang. It was published in Weird Tales and earned him a whole $16. Woohoo! Yeah, writer, writers got paid the big bucks back. <laughs> Adjusting for inflation, yeah. that's like, what, $18? Yeah, uh, probably more like 80 Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's thought to be the father of the uh, sword and sorcery genre. Oh, uh, cool. Because he kind of, you know, Conan was kind of one of these first kind of fantasy uh, stories. My uncle had, true. F- had issue number one of the Conan comic. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was Marvel, That's cool. I think. But uh, my, my grandmother threw it out because oh. she yeah. didn't care about the medium. Oh. Yeah, so that has a sad ending to it. Yeah. I shouldn't have brought that up. Uh, speaking of sad endings, <laughs> uh, uh, he unfortunately took his life at the age of 30. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see, uh, there's actually a, a movie put out about, like, the last few years of his life. Uh, it's called The Whole Wide World. It's got uh, Vincent D'Onofrio and Renee Zellweger. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
Um, but man, if you ever want to see how to write like a, a really well done fight scene in a like a written, uh, read some of his like boxing stories. Like he he, oh. he was a boxer for a little bit, I believe. Yes. But uh, cool. I read several like his stories about boxing and the way he describes the fights. It's like super fluid. You can picture it all in your head. Yeah, I love that. You know, it's, it's kind of like a master class on <laughs> on how to write a a fight scene. And I also wrote several stories in the uh, Lovecraftian mythos. Um, okay. Yeah, he was a contemporary of Lovecraft. Um, cool. And, of course, uh, you know, Lovecraft kind of encouraged other writers to write in kind of the same uh, genre for, like, Amazing Tales and Weird Tales and, like, all those pulp pulp fiction magazines where we, where we get yeah. pulp fiction. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, like I said, really, like, he brought us Conan. Like, yeah. Yeah. One, That's one, pretty incredible. If one not of, for him, Arnold Schwarzenegger would never have had a punch the camel in the face. That's in true. In face. Yep. In our face. Have, have you I ever, forgot about have that. Have you ever seen Hercules in New York where, like, they, oh, yeah. they dub over Arnold? Yeah, yeah that's really what? weird to yeah. watch. It was his first film, and people, I guess, thought, like, they couldn't handle his accent, so yeah. they, they dubbed him over. That's such an infamous yeah. accent, though. They, they even like, changed his name. They called him Arnold Strong uh, in the credits. <laughs> what? Such a lame name. Yeah. I am Arnold Strong. Because I'm huge. Yep. Like, yeah, we get it. So the fact that I was dubbed over in my first movie doesn't make yeah. me feel so bad since there I There you go. Was. There you go. There's, <laughs> there's hope, Mike. There's hope. I may have a future yet. Yes, yeah. I agree. But, yeah. In, uh, in, in, isn't it being dubbed over extra thing? Because you were an extra, right? Or, uh, well, no, you had, a, you had a speaking part. I had obviously. a speaking part, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, the most thing that disturbs me about it is was the voice that they got – Sounds like such a dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> did you dirty? Yeah, they did me dirty. I I, I almost would like to like grab the footage and like redub it, <laughs> redub myself. As yeah, lots of fun. Do it. Yeah. Oh my god, do it. Yeah, I, th- I think I said on YouTube. Uh, oh, it's on. Oh, oh. Yeah, I I had the Blu-ray. Like I bought the Blu-ray expecting to hear my own <laughs> voice. <but> no. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Hey guys, <laughs> there's a bad there's a bad man over there. Yeah. See, like, I never understood why they dubbed you over, though. Like, I feel like you have such a great voice. Like, yeah. they would be like, sweet. Like, that's one less person we have to worry about. It might like, have, it's so dumb. Might have been one of those things where there might have been, like, an audio issue recording it or something like that. Like, I don't know. I don't Bro. know the reason. So there may be legitimate reasons. But it was, it was, it was kind of funny. I, like, I hope I hope it was an, I hope it was an audio issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It just seems ridiculous. Speaking of uh, Lovecraft, though, I don't know if I'm going to get hate for this. But honestly... Overrated. Yep. Yep. Lovecraft? Yep. He's, I think he, um, he had brilliant premises, but like his writing, to me, is so boring. He cheaps out on describing the monster. Yeah. Like, it, the monster was so horrible, it was unspeakable, and <laughs> it had tentacles, and it kind of looked like a fish. Like, if you read his, like, multiple, like, Lovecraftian things, it's like, yep. just, just describe the monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we want. Everything can't be like mind bendingly. It looked like a fish. It looked like an octopus. Yeah. And it was spooky. <laughs> like, cool. Yeah. But yeah, no, like, I definitely get that his stories have, like, influenced so much. And I respect him for that. But for me, as, like, a reader, I can't get into it. I tried, like, multiple times. Yeah. Like, I, I remember sitting down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it today. And then, like, halfway through, like, the first chapter, I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah. Like, I just couldn't do it. In, in terms of. Like people writing at that time, like that's why I kind of prefer uh, Robert E. Howard's uh, yeah. work. For, Absolutely, uh, yeah, you can't really fault Lovecraft for because it, it was it's a sign of the times, right? Like they had different standards, oh, different yeah. Uh, lore. Yeah, he was also oh, like, even like, yeah. yeah, even like the like slasher movies from the eighties by today's standards are pretty lame. Yeah, they're still fun to watch, but. Well, oh, absolutely. Yeah, here's the main difference between Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard. In, in like a Lovecraft story, a guy will see like a, this unknown entity and it'll drive him insane. In a yeah. Robert E. Howard story, the guy will see like an unknown net entity and then pile drive it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Stone Cold Stunners. Pr- pretty yeah. much, yeah. I love it. But yeah, like, I don't know. It's like I respect Lovecraft and everything he did for that genre, but I just... 
every time I try, I'm just like, man, this is really, really boring. Yeah. It's, uh, the way he writes is kind of esoteric. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, Lovecraft. Canceled. <laughs> he's, 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 he was canceled long before we brought him up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't he like a really messed up dude? Like yeah, outside he, of being he had offered? like a lot of mental health issues, and uh, he was xenophobic of everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. like he hated everyone. Yeah, <laughs> he was also like really big into the occult, though. Like I remember hearing that. Like, to be fair, this was on a supernatural episode, so I don't know how legit this is. Hmm. But they talked about how like he used to do seances and like do that kind of stuff because he was really trying to open like the door to hell and like figure out if it was real or not. I don't know if that's legit, but if yeah. it is, I'm like, that makes sense. Was he, <laughs> like, was he hanging out with uh, Alistair Crowley? <laughs> did they overlap? I, uh, I think they at did the same actually. Time, yeah. Um, no, uh, L. Ron Hubbard was in there too. They're, they're, they're yeah. yeah. Well, L. Ron just like decided to make a religion so he could make money. Yeah. That's where the money's yep. at. Yep. And he wasn't wrong. <laughs> nope. Uh, but, uh, has everyone done their three? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Unless you want to talk about menus some more. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. The Taco Bell menu is amazing, by the way. Yep. I think you're the only one who could talk about menus for hours, to be honest. So we have to it's, start a separate YouTube channel a for yeah, for you talking menus. <laughs> yeah, just Chris Reviews Menus, yep. episode one. Chris's menu review. That's, there be, you go. That would be a long show. Yep. <laughs> like like three hours a day. Oh, my God. Get it sponsored by like Uber Eats or something like that. Ooh, oh, not, my God. Yeah, or skip idea. the dishes. Yep. All right. Well, I'll start local and spread out. There you go. There you go. Tumblr Ridge. <laughs> Coming at you. <laughs> well, I think that wraps up this edition of uh, Media Minute. Uh, anyone else got anything to want to add? I no. Know. I, I think I'm good. A bit of a short one today. Yeah. All I know yeah. is I'm going to go home and watch Mortal Kombat. Oh, the new one. Yeah, it's out. Yeah. You can rent it on YouTube I now. Heard, I heard it's kind of a peaks and valleys. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not expecting high art. great parts. Yeah, I'm not great. expecting high art. I, as long as it's fun. I think it will be. Like, like it, from the clips I've seen, like just like on the trailer and stuff, I feel like this is more of a popcorn movie than it is like a cinematic movie, right? Yeah. They did this more so for the fans than anybody else. It can't be worse than the last one. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I if thinking. it is, that's impressive. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I'm going to go home and read. Yeah. Cool. A menu. Probably. Or several. <laughs> we need yeah. to start an ASMR menu channel. Well, Boston Pizza. Yes. Has a, yeah. Boston Pizza has a great menu. <laughs> Any Indian restaurant, amazing menus. Yeah. I'm just totally redirecting this back <laughs> towards <laughs> menus. Well, uh, I think we'll wrap, every, everyone's trying we'll to wrap leave. Up, we'll wrap up things there. And I then, think. <laughs> uh, me- any Mexican restaurant has a fantastic <laughs> menu. Mike, take it away, days. quick. All right. For Media Minute, I'm Michael Forward. I'm hungry. (laughs) I'm Rachel Edge. (laughs) We'll see you next time. Subscribe. And we're on BitChute. Yep. Hit the like button, bells, hit whatever. Yeah, I'll throw a little uh, subscribe thing in there. Maybe somewhere around Just don't hit anything living. That would be sad. Yeah, don't do that. No. Just bells and like buttons. Smash like buttons. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.